I'll ask you about that. We'll okay. get there. So, uh, you know that Ms. Hurd stopped seeing Dr. Jacobs in August 2014. That's correct. And she didn't go back until after she got sued, right? I believe that's the date. I'd have to look for, to make sure, but I believe that you're correct. Yeah. And you said you reviewed Dr. Con you, you interviewed Dr. Connell. That's correct. And you also reviewed his deposition testimony. That's correct. And you know that when that he testified that when he was treating a patient, he assumes the patient is telling the truth, correct? I believe he said something to that effect in his deposition. And if he, he has no reason to believe otherwise, if there's no other data to believe otherwise that your patient's not being totally honest with you, then you believe what they're saying. Right. No other data to believe otherwise, but the sole thing that's happening is Ms. Hurd is talking to Mr. Cohen. Or Dr. Cohen. I wouldn't say she's talking to him. She's going to him for therapy, and he's using his clinical psychological expertise to understand the connection between her symptoms and what she's reporting what's going on in her life. All right. But you understand that he testified that he assumes the patient is telling the truth. Again, I understand that statement in his testimony. I have a lot more rich information of having spoken to him for two hours and reviewing his clinical notes. He testified he was making a leap of faith with respect to that, right? With respect to the truthfulness. Again, that was not my understanding of speaking with him and reviewing his notes. I'm aware he testified something to that effect. Um, and you testified yesterday that Dr. Cohen never diagnosed Ms. Hurd with any personality disorders. You remember that? Yes. In fact, Dr. Cohen's deposition testimony reflects the fact that he doesn't make diagnoses, correct? Correct. And I asked him specifically, did he have any indications that even if he doesn't, as his practice, use them, does she meet criteria for a personality disorder? And he told me she did not. All right. So you asked him specifically with respect to a topic you haven't disclosed in your uh, expert report, and then uh, he made a conclusion that's reflected in no document. It's reflected in my notes. It's reflected in his notes about what he's treating. He's treating the symptoms. He's not focusing on the diagnosis, but he is treating the symptoms. You talked about Dr. Cohen's concern for Ms. Hurd's safety. Correct. He wasn't talking about her physical safety, was he? Yes, he was. No, he was talking about her emotional safety. Weren't, wasn't that what he was talking about? He was concerned for both. Okay. Did Dr. Cohen testify that he never had the feeling that Johnny intended to hurt Ms. Hurd? I believe he said that. I mean, he talked about Mr. Depp being very poorly controlled, and that's what made him, him, Dr. Cohen, concerned, because in those moments when he was not controlled, that he could accidentally seriously hurt Ms. Hurd. Let's do this again. Ms. Hurd told Dr. Cohen that Mr. Depp was poorly controlled, correct? That's not correct. Okay. He determined that from the, in, the treatment he was providing Ms. Hurd. And he also had a couple session with Mr. Depp, and he also had correspondence with Dr. Kipper. So he had other information as to Mr. Depp's functioning. All right, you talked about Dr. Banks. Correct. Dr. Banks was doing relationship consulting, right? Consultation and relation. Correct. And Dr. Banks only met with them once. Correct. All right. And you did an interview, I think, with uh, Ms. Hurd's mother, Payne. That's correct. All right. You'd agree with me that a person's family member is not the most objective source of information? Sometimes you have to certainly control for that, that the person may be wanting to be protective of, um, of their daughter, of course. And you interviewed Ms. Uh, Paige Hurd after Mr. Depp had already, been sued, uh, had already sued uh, Amber Hurd. Right. The entirety of my work in this case happened, obviously, after the lawsuit. Did you review, in that context, any of uh, Paige Hurd's text messages with, with Mr. Depp? I'm not sure if I saw them with Mr. Depp. I do believe I saw some with Ms. Hurd. I mean, Ms. Ms. Hurd, Ms. Page Hurd, 
Paige Heard, Amber Heard's mother, did talk to me about her relationship with Mr. Dent. And she told you that she loved Johnny even after Amber alleged abuse, correct? She did. All right. Now, you testified that you approach a forensic evaluation with, I think you said it again today, a healthy degree of skepticism. Correct. All right. This skepticism didn't uh, cause you to conduct interviews with, for instance, Laurel Anderson. Right. I did not speak to Dr. Laurel Anderson. And you chose not to speak to Dr. Laurel Anderson because you disagreed with Dr. Laurel Anderson? That's not correct. All right. You know, what did Dr. Laurel Anderson do on behalf of um, Ms. Hurd and Mr. Depp? She was a couples therapist that they sought. They had four couples sessions, um, as I stated yesterday, one of them in which Mr. Depp uh, stormed out of. She did have a long, I guess, evaluation or interview with Mr. Depp individually and with Ms. Hurd individually. And then she saw them. Um, inter intermittently after um, the May 21st, 2016 incident and they, when they were filing for divorce. Uh, so you didn't interview uh, Laurel Anderson, but you know what she did? How'd you figure that out? Because we had her redacted notes and her deposition. All right. And you understood from her deposition that Dr. Anderson didn't believe Ms. Hurd to be a victim of spousal abuse? I believe those were her words, yes. And you also understood from her deposition that Mr. Depp had not had a very long history of being violent with any of his wife or women. That she said that as well? Yeah. But that something about Ms. Hurd significantly triggered him. She talked about that as well. And Dr. Anderson thought that Mr. Depp had been, uh, her words, well controlled, I think for almost 20 or 30 years, correct? Up until this point, I believe she said. Uh, I know that you testified that you reviewed medical records. Yes. All right. So, you know, Ms. Hurd had a personal nurse. Correct. Uh, Aaron Filotti. Correct. You didn't interview Ms. Filotti either. I did not. Uh, you know she spent time with Ms. Hurd on a regular basis during her relationship with Mr. Depp. Correct. I had her clinical notes that I reviewed. Right. And you reviewed her, test her deposition testimony. Correct. Some of which the jury's heard, right? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, and you re reviewed the, the nursing notes. Yes. So you know that Ms. Hurd admitted to a history of eating disorders to Ms. Filotti, correct? I know that's in the notes. That's nowhere else in any other record, so I'm not sure where that came from. But you relied on everybody else's notes. And there are some things that I disagreed with, like I disagree with Dr. Laurel Anderson about it being mutual abuse. Right. So the stuff you disagree with, you disregard, and the rest you keep, correct? Well, that's not correct. But that's what you did. That's not correct. All right. Um, you know that Ms. Filotti saw Ms. Hurd immediately after she returned from Australia. I'd have to look at the notes again to be sure, but I know she did see her when she came back from Australia. That's correct. Did Ms. Filotti document any injuries to Ms. Hurd in her notes? I did not see that in the record. Okay, so you looked at her notes, and there's no injury to Miss Heard documented in her nurse's notes following her return from Australia. Correct. Okay. You talked about uh, this concept, uh, which you then defined, uh, lethality. And you testified there are certain factors in their present relationship where a woman ends up uh, murdered by her partner. Correct. And that's one of the ways you look at, as to whether a woman is in a very dangerous situation. Correct. Can we put PX92? Okay. 
it's in evidence. Public to the jury. Yeah, it will be published. <laughs> Do you know what this is? I believe this is the um, knife that Miss Heard gave to Mr. Depp as a gift. All right. And you speak Spanish? Un poquito. You know what it says? Yes, it says hasta la muerta until death. So a woman you suggest has characteristics of being afraid for her life gives her intimate partner a large knife, which she has inscribed until death. That's your testimony? Well, there's context. Okay. Uh, we can do that later. Uh, so we talked about, you talked a little bit about uh, Mr. Depp purporting to demonstrate uh, jealousy with Ms. Hurd. Do you recall that? Yes, I do. Uh, and you specifically talked about Mr. Depp displaying jealousy regarding uh, the actor James Frank. Correct. Yeah. Now, the very first time you met with Ms. Hurd, she talked to you about Ms. Frank, uh, Mr. Frank, or James Frank, correct? I don't know if it was the first time, but I did ask about some other relationships. Okay. So, why don't we do this? Let's go uh, PX1246. I just want to go to the first page. All right. So, it, do you recognize the document that's in front of you? Yes. All right. And what I would like to do, what is it? Um, it's one, uh, a top sheet of a background information questionnaire that I use to help guide the evaluation. Okay. So, now, this is, who filled it out? I filled it out. Whose form is it? My form. All right. I'm going to move just the first page into evidence because it, we're going to talk about other portions of it later. Could you back out so she can see the first, whole first page? Okay, any objection? Uh, Okay, I can't. We will admit the whole thing in evidence. You want the whole thing in evidence? Sure. I have no objection whatsoever. All right, 1246 in evidence in full. Okay. Are there I, any are there any identifiers that need or are we just we're just going Yeah, I'm sure there's going to be some. All right. So probably. Okay. So you owe me a redacted one. Correct. Don't know what the nature of the redactions are going to be, but Okay, well, yeah. you can discuss we'll work, it. We'll work with okay, you on thank that, you. All right. I'm positive right. there's identified. All right. Um, 1246 uh, has been moved into evidence. Can we blow up the bottom right hand corner? All right. You want to publish to the jury? Yeah, let's publish it to the jury. I, I don't. Well, we can. It, well, why don't you. Um, I don't see anything on the first if page. If you want to look at that, any objection to that? Well, that's what they're going to show. Right that's now. what we're going to show. All right, publish this thing. All right. All right, so this is the bottom, bottom corner, um, your notes. Um, and it's under the section of your notes that's entitled intimate relationship. Correct. Right. And one of the notes here on the right, it says J.F., that's James, James Franco, right? Correct. Got close, but really wanted to, to be with Johnny. Well, it says you have friends. They were friends. All right. It said friends, but you put him under intimate relation. Well, there's a line there because I was asking specifically about other things that were allegations in this matter. There's a line there because you did not believe that they sh should go under intimate relationships, but it's on your form? She wasn't telling me that this was an intimate relationship. I queried as to what's going on with James Franco because that was something that was raised in this case. Uh, and there's a note for December 2050. When they became more friends, more friendly. Right. And that was a period of time in which Ms. Heard was married to Mr. Depp, correct? Correct. So she became close with Mr. Franco. 
in December 2015, and uh, at least you put it under intimate relationship. With a line differentiating another part of this document. Okay. Did you provide another header, like a header that says friends? No. No. Well, let's look at the next one. The next one says, I think it says Elon. Correct. It's Elon Musk, right? Correct. All right. May 2016. Correct. Met him Met Ball. Correct. That's a big fancy party in New York, right? Yes, it is. All right. Um, and she says she dated him after Johnny. Correct. She met Elon Musk in May 2016. When she filed the TRO? Uh, the last answer was May 21st. I believe it was May 26th, 27th. I'm correct. When did she start dating Elon Musk? Sometime after that. All right. Sometime after the TRO? I believe so, yes. Okay. You talk. We can take that down. You talked uh, quite a lot yesterday about this concept of uh, reactive violence. Yes. Yeah. Um, so I, just so I understand your position on this, is it your position that if Miss Heard was abused, she gets to hit Mr. Depp? That's not my opinion. But you know she hits him, right? And I testified to that. Right. And how many times do you believe that she told you that she hit him? Do I believe that she told me or how many instances were there? Well, I don't know. How, you, how would you know other than her telling you? You weren't there, right? I was not there. That's correct. All right. 